So the most important thing when it comes to planting the feet, understanding what is being affected by each peg. So for example, my master peg, if I were to move this down, that it's gonna affect these individual pieces as well because they're attached to that peg. I move this arm peg down, it's gonna affect the hand, the forearm, and the upper arm pieces. That's super important to remember. For our example, we have a person standing here and he jumps in the air. You'll notice he moves up and the arms and legs are also moving. If I open my master peg and I get rid of the keyframe on it, you'll see his arms and legs are still moving, but he's no longer moving up and down because that up and down movement was stored on this master peg layer. So let me show you an example. Let's say we want to add some anticipation. We want to have this character bend down before he jumps. Well, pretty easy, no problem. Let's go on our master peg. I'll put my onion skin on and let's just drop the whole character down. And now with my onion skin, I'll move the legs in place. We're gonna match the feet perfectly. And in theory, this should mean that the feet will be planted. Other leg, let's do the same thing. Match it as close as we can, removing the whole leg to match those feet. So now on the surface, without any tweens, it looks good. The feet are relatively staying in the same spot. Watch what happens when we add our tween. A tween from our first frame to our anticipation pose. Watch the feet. They sink below that line and then come back up. That's a problem. The reason that happens is because we're animating up and down on our master peg and also animating these individual pieces as well. As the master peg goes down, the legs are coming up and we're getting this strange dipping effect. Could do is adjust each frame individually. That is super annoying. So here's a better option. Won't use our master peg. Instead of dropping him with the master peg, I'm just gonna select the individual pieces and you can have your master peg collapsed for this. I'm just gonna drop the pelvis. I'm gonna drop the torso. So now I'm going individually and dropping those pieces. We'll drop the top part of the leg. And you may need to adjust the pivot point temporarily. That's fine, it shouldn't mess up your animation. And I'll bend the knees like this. You'll notice though, I'm not touching the feet at all. We can even use some deformers and our animation should still work. So don't feel this limits how you pose your character. Notice there's a white keyframe on our master peg and that just means there's no keyframe on the actual master peg layer, but underneath there are keyframes. So if we open up this peg, you'll see in the lower body, right? There's a keyframe on the shin. There's a keyframe on the upper leg. Okay, so that's just what that means. It's always a good idea, even though we don't have any animation stored on the master peg layer, we can press F6 and then Control L to get rid of those automatic tweens. This just helps keep things organized. And if you also notice, this looks very similar to this pose on the surface, right? There's not much that's changing, but when we tween it, watch what happens. Let's zoom in on the feet. The feet are completely planted. No bobbing up and down, no adjusting that we have to do. We go from here to here, it's gonna be a lot easier to get the poses we want because we don't have to worry about the feet sliding. So just be aware of what pegs are controlling what and it's gonna help you when it comes to sliding feet. Our next example, let's say we want the hands to stay where they are. We'll keyframe our master peg first this time. We'll leave the hands where they are and we'll just move these individual pieces, right? And since we're not permanently moving these pivot points, Toon Boom should be able to interpolate it pretty well. We'll move just the torso forward. We'll move the neck. I can move the upper leg and the lower leg. Clean up these deformers as well. Really good idea before you tween anything to make sure that your deformers are looking perfect. So without tweens, each of these poses 
There shouldn't be any breaks. Every line should meet up perfectly. Because it's a lot easier to fix things now rather than going back afterwards and trying to put pieces together when we animate. Little imperfections, I'm going to nip them in the butt right now. Now when we tween, our hands are staying exactly where we want them. There's minimal breakage to the rig. And even take a look at our feet. No sliding whatsoever. Yeah, okay, guys, that method has really made my life a whole lot easier. It's made me get my work done faster as well because I don't have to deal with as many mistakes. Another example of planning ahead at the beginning can save you a lot of time at the end of your shot.